2023 president, Space Coast Association of Realtors. Welcome to our uh, Zoom candidate forum. Uh, this candidate forms an opportunity for us to introduce the candidates running for the 2024 board of directors. These candidates will have an opportunity to tell you a little bit about themselves and their credentials and what they would bring to the board. Uh, we, we will announce the candidates in alphabetical order as they will appear on the ballot. And if you have specific questions, please use the chat, please use the chat feature. And after the candidates have finished, we'll try to respond. So we will be um, hopefully uh, seeing and hearing uh, the following candidates. Omar Capellan, Tammy Cristofoli, Natalie Derrick, Jackie Griffin, Rusty Mel, Rose Street, Donna Tidwell, and Pat Weeks. So uh, as we go down this list, um, like to start with Mr. Omar Capellan. Omar, could you tell us in two minutes a little bit about yourself and uh, go right ahead. Uh, good morning all and uh, good morning Madam President. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, chat to our membership this morning. Um, as you said, my name is uh, Omar Capellan and uh, I have been a director at uh, Space Coast Association of Realtors for the past three years now. Uh, my first stint at it, um, current secretary, and also, but I have uh, been Florida Realtors Director uh, for representing SCAR for the past four years. Um, I'm also a trustee for our foundation, the Brevard Children in Need. I'm also the vice chair for the Florida Realtors uh, Leadership Academy this year, and, and will be the chairman for Florida Realtors Leadership Academy next year. So I'm an, also an instructor for Florida Realtors uh, teach all over the state, and um, I have my brokerage. It's a boutique brokerage in the mainly in the area of Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach, and uh, the beaches. Um, and that's basically me in a nutshell. Thank you, Madam President. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Tammy Christofoli. There she is. Welcome, Tammy. Tammy needs to unmute. Tammy, you're on mute. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I apologize. I lost my voice. Um, been a little bit sick. I brought back quite a bit of information from Florida Annual Convention along with a little bit of a sickness. Um, so I apologize. Um, I have been a realtor for 10 years. Um, I just recently got my broker license. So I'm a broker associate. I was on the board um, this year. I took a year off, but I had a three-year term prior and uh, was secretary 2022. Um, I've been on the Florida Realtors Board um, for the past four years and attend Florida Annual Convention, Midwinter, Guard, um, heavily involved with everything. And um, that's pretty much it. Okay. All right, sorry you're feeling bad, Tammy. Uh, let's bring up Natalie Derrick next. Natalie. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I too just came back from the um, annual conference. Um, thankfully, I did not bring back anything with me. <laughs> Other than education and knowledge. Uh, for those of you there, it was a fantastic experience. A uh, little bit about myself. Um, Born and raised in Brevard County. Um, well, not born, but I moved here in 1965, which is close enough. But I come from a long legacy of real estate. Uh, when I came home from college for the summer in 1982, my dad demanded that I get my real estate license at the age of 18. And I have experienced every nuance of running a real estate office from cleaning out the ashtrays and the bullpens back then, to running a property management business. At that time, my dad had the largest Century 21 franchise in Brevard County. And so I've experienced what it's worked with a large brokerage. But currently, my husband and I own a boutique brokerage specializing 
in property management, commercial and residential. I am currently serving as the 2023 first vice president of the Women's Council of Realtors Florida, which I feel gives me a very strong background for collaboration, uh, not only locally, but statewide and nationally. I will be serving in 2024 as the president elect for the Women's Council of Realtors Florida. Uh, I have obtained multiple designations um, to advance my knowledge of real estate. And I just feel that I really bring to the table a vision for reaching out to our members and the community beyond. Thank you. Natalie, thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Rusty Mel. Rusty, you need to. Just making sure I was unmuted. <laughs> so good morning. Thank you, Nancy, uh, for that introduction. As Nancy said, my name is Rusty Mel. Um, again, small teak brokerage, uh, like a lot of people on here. I've been involved with the board back in grievance. I've been a realtor since 2006. Sit on the commercial investment committee the last four years we were trying to achieve our five star we're getting close on that also get sit on the commercial task force uh through there and been a board member for the last three years our current treasurer and i think it's just important to give back to our occupation uh, and, and volunteer back into our profession and always trying to achieve that so i'd like to continue that uh, along and try to help achieve some of these goals that we're working on I think that's about it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Next up, Ms. Rose Street. Oh. Okay, so I'm um, a broker associate. I've been selling real estate for 11 years. Um, I've been in this area since 2014 when my husband retired. Um, I have a GRI designation. I'm a Florida director for the past couple years, and I was appointed to as a SCAR director this year to fill out a term for somebody who stepped down. I've been to both the local and the state leadership, and I have a certified international property specialist designation where I took our global committee. I'm the global chair, and we had four um, other realtors come with me to Costa Rica to work on that designation. And that's a little bit about me. Fantastic. Thank you, Rose. Next up, Ms. Donna Tidwell. We, we can't hear you, Donna. Give her a minute. Thank you. Can you hear me? Now we can. Great. Okay. Good morning. I'm honored to have this opportunity to address you all today as a candidate for the board of directors. And as we discuss the crucial responsibility of selection of who will guide the future of the association, may I take a moment to highlight why I believe that my education, training, experience, dedication, and unwavering passion for real estate makes me an ideal candidate for this esteemed position. My educational background has equipped me with a solid foundation to navigate all the complexities of real estate. I have obtained and maintained many designations and certifications. I'm a graduate of the SCAR Leadership Academy, attendance in multitudes of training sessions and classes, committee involvement in both local and state levels, I'm a graduate of the United States Air Force Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. I'm a retired Senior Master Sergeant of the US Air Force, degree in electrical engineering, then a participating member in the Grievance Committee. I'm currently on the Board of Directors for Space Coast and also on the Florida Board of Directors the RPEC chairman for 2022-2023, and I have been elected to be the 
um, chairman for 2024. All of that education provides me with extensive leadership and corporate governance. My experience throughout my professional journey, having had the privilege to work in many roles through the real estate sector, gives me insights to market trends, property evaluation, and risk assessment. What has that done for me? It's cultivated a sharp eye for me to look for opportunities for growth and enhance operational efficiency. That's your two minutes, Donna. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donna. Next, I'd like to introduce Pat Weeks. I was unmuting myself. I had a few uh, uh, snafus with my computer this morning and the uh, camera didn't want to work. So I apologize for that. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Uh, I and Pat Weeks, and I was your 2021 president. I served on the board, uh, local board for six years. This year was my year off, even though I was district vice president for Florida Realtors for District 2. Um, I attended every one of our uh, board meetings, even though technically I could not vote, but um, I wanted to stay current on everything. I, of course, have very active local, I serve on five state committees. I also serve on NAR uh, state, the uh, NAR committee. And um, so I'm very active in everything and try very hard to do what is best for our local association. And uh, so I would ask you to vote for me. I'm sure my name will be the, I think it's the last one on the slate. And as I always say, vote Pat Weeks, not days, not months, but weeks. Thank you very much. Excellent, Pat, thank you so much. Uh, we do have a video to play from uh, Ms. Jackie Griffin, uh, and she was provided the three questions that I will be asking the rest of the candidates. I think she'll be answering these in the video as well. So we'd like to run that video from Jackie Griffin and then we'll, we'll uh, begin on our three questions. Hi, I'm Jackie Griffin. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today. I'd much rather be there with my peers. It's much more comfortable than speaking into a camera lens. But anyway, I wanted to let you know that I am running for the board and it's because I have a passion for the value of what we do. And I want to be able to contribute from that level. The committee has asked me to answer several questions. And so with the help of behind the scenes camera assistant, I'm going to ask that she read the question and then I'll answer it for you. Question one, what do you think is the main challenge facing our association? How would you respond to that challenge? Well, today we're over 5,000 members. We're multi-generational and it's a very diverse group. And I think our biggest challenge is bringing all of those together. I feel that we need more participation at the board from our membership. And so getting the information out to that many people in a method that they would receive best is a challenge. And I feel that we are challenged to get more participation from our mm -hmm. realtors, the ones that pay for the services that we offer. And so I would like to be a part of helping get the word out and have our realtors feel more welcome and always included in what we offer. Question two, will you support positions taken by the Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you oppose the positions when they were being considered and debated by the Board of Directors? Absolutely. I will speak my opinion behind closed doors, but at the end of the day, we need to come out united. And I believe that the majority rules. And so I will always support what the majority decides. Question three, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize during the next two years? I think in the next two years, what I'd like to see is an opportunity for more workshop-based training within our curriculum at the board. I'd like to see workshops that deal with the current situations that our agents face in the field. I want everyone to feel welcome. <laughs> whether you are just beginning your real estate career 
or have been in it for some time. I know that the board has been extremely successful. At one time, we were two boards in South Brevard and North Brevard, and we've come together as one. And I am very proud of that, that we can all be one Space Coast Association of Brevard County. And now is the time to bridge the gap with our generation. I think that helping the young beginning realtors and helping the seasoned agents all come together in one united front as our realtor community is what I hope to see for us in the next several years. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected to your board, I promise to serve you, the realtor, our customer. In closing, I would really like to encourage you to take a look at all your candidates and select the ones that suit your needs the best. Thanks for having me on, giving me this moment of time. Have a wonderful day. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm going to take a, a moment to ask each one of our candidates a question one at a time. Um, so I'd like to ask Omar Capellan, what do you think is the main challenge facing our association and how would you respond to that challenge? Good morning again. Um, uh, thank you, Madam President, and uh, for giving me the, the chance to speak. And just in case uh, for some of the folks that joined after the fact, again, my name is Omar Capellan, and I am seeking a second stint as a board of directors. Um, so I feel that our, one of our main challenges continues to be showing value and, and a great customer experience to our members. Uh, the main challenge facing our <clears throat> is as quickly as the real estate industry uh, changes. It is always a challenge to show value to our members and MLS participants relative to the dues and fees. Um, I feel that um, as an association, we strive to provide uh, quality resources and tools, but more third parties or even brokerages are providing similar services. So um, to respond to this challenge, we as an association, we need to continue to identify member needs and how we can provide better service to meet those needs in, in these times. And it's super important. I also feel that we need to strive to make better use of available data to identify our member needs. Quality and, and a superb customer experience are also high priority. Uh, an idea is to hold quarterly customer experience uh, workshops, for example, to ensure that we take ownership of our members' needs and work diligently to solve any problems they might be facing. And this is some of the things that I have in as part of my agenda as a director. And that's why I'm seeking for your vote uh, this time around. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, Tammy Christofoli, same thing. What do you think is the main challenge facing our association? And how would you respond to that challenge? Um, I agree. I think member engagement is huge. Um, our members seeing our the benefits that the association does offer. Um, I think that's something that's lacking. I see it actually getting better throughout the years because I think this has been one of our challenges for a long time. Um, but I think collaboration is big. Like we, uh, all of the members need to know we actually work together. We're all working towards the same thing. And I think the best way to do that is to make them feel heard and included and like they are um, being supported by us, you know, from the leadership. So, and it has to come down from leadership, us inviting them to things, us um, having one-on-ones with them, making them feel that they are included and they are welcome and they're being heard um, is huge. And I think that helps the member engagement. Um, I think the leadership and I know I, I was on, I'm chair of professionalism education this year and I've had a lot of new committee members and just them feeling like their voice is being heard and they're part of it. Um, I already see them signing up for more committees next year. Um, so, kind of being able to engage and being able to connect with people on a level like we are leadership, but we are out there selling just like you are. We are, you know, as someone said, heels on the ground. You know, I'm just like you. I'm opening lock boxes. I'm writing contracts. I'm not just sitting on the board level, um, you know, making decisions for people that I can't relate with. So I've tried to do that a lot. And I think if all of our leadership and all of our members can come together and realize 
we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to um, get to the closing table. We're all trying to get clients. Um, we're just like you. So that is going to be one of my um, things that I would do as a director is try to relate more with them and make them feel included in everything we do and all of our education and keeping up with the market. I mean, the market is changing, so they're going to need our support more than ever. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, I just want to remind everybody that we are all volunteer leaders. This is something that each one of these people um, has decided a major decision uh, that they have a passion to uh, further our association. So um, if I haven't already said so, thank everybody for their time and energy to do this for the greater good. So I'm, I'm just uh, honored to be a part of it myself. Next up, Ms. Natalie Derrick. What do you think the main challenge facing our association is? How would you respond to that challenge? Future relevance. With a change, the rapidly changing technology, the up and coming demographics of buyers and sellers that would much prefer to not even meet in person, but would rather fill out an online form and text. I think we have to provide relevance and we have to showcase to our community the need for that relationship and what our, what value we bring to the table. And I think as long as uh, we as realtors go along blindly thinking that there will always be uh, the next customer, I think eventually we will be redundant. And so we really need to educate our members um, about creating that touch through community outreach, collaboration with other organizations, um, and developing that relationship with the next generation that is fully tech savvy. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. Mr. Rusty Mal, batter up here. What do you think the next uh, main challenge facing our association is, and how would you respond to that? Thank you, Nancy. Um, we're always facing chance challenges. The industry is changing so rapidly. I think right now, some of our biggest challenges that we look at is, you know, we're going to have a lot of AI coming into the into the industry. We're seeing that already. And, you know, to be compliant with code of ethics and fair housing and everything else, uh, AI doesn't always look at that. So we're going to have to educate ourselves and our members uh, how to navigate some of those waters uh, through there as well. And professionalism both for ourselves and for the public. Uh, we're always being perceived uh, through there. And so we always need to achieve that next level of uh, professionalism. I think that's an ongoing battle all the time for all of us to strive to be the best and how the public sees us in our profession. So those are the big things. And then with the changing waters, we're gonna hear a lot coming about buyer brokers agreements. And I mm -hmm. think coming from the association down to our members, uh, we're probably gonna have to spearhead a lot of that and educate people if this is the direction things are gonna go and be prepared for that. So I think there's gonna be a lot of heavy lifting for all of us and our members uh, through there. And as everybody said, getting people engaged and involved, it's gonna take everybody through there uh, to work in that. So I'd like to see a lot of broker engagement. I know that we go out to the association and all our members, but uh, I'd like to see a higher level of broker participation and try to get those brokers involved as well so that we can really hear their feedback that they're interacting with the public and their clients and, and people with that we can uh, hopefully, you know, enrich all of us and educate ourselves a little better. So that's the areas that I think that we'll have to continue to strive because it's changing very fast. Yes, I excellent, excellent, I agree. Ms. Rose Street, what do you think the main challenge facing our association is and how would you respond to that challenge? Well, I think our, one of our main challenges is a lot of times people think we're competing against each other and we really aren't. We're trying to support each other, but a lot of agents, even older agents, don't realize a lot of the programs that our board offers, which is where some of the committees that do like the members benefit day and some of the outreach committees really help let others know. So I think by us working to support each other is really key in our industry. Um, we do have a lot of things our board offers, and we do teach a lot of classes. So I think it's just important that um, we let other people know about these classes. Um, I can give a really quick example. I had an agent who's been selling probably 10 plus years, and she contacted me. 
she had changed brokerages and she said, I don't know how to use transaction desk. How do I get into some of this stuff? Mm -hmm. And the board offers classes every month. She wasn't even aware there were classes. And so I just think by her being able to reach out to me made her feel comfortable that I wasn't going to be, oh, you need to go do this. I was trying to support her and walk her through some of the simple basic things that we need to do. So I just think by us being supportive of each other is what we really need to to work on as far as one of the main challenges that we face as agents today. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, Ms. Donna Tedwell, same question. What do you think the main challenge facing our association is and how would you respond to that challenge? I agree with what Natalie and Rusty said. I really think the landscape of technology is probably our biggest challenge not only with the association, but with each individual realtor, with the training, the application and the ethical use and all the regulatory implications that come with that technology. We've got to be maintained uh, as far as education and application on that. We as an association, I think we need to establish the guidelines, the standards, the um, standards of practice to ensure that we all act responsibly, ethically, and within the legal ramifications, the legal guidelines. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pat Weeks, what do you think our main challenge facing our association is, and how would you respond to that challenge? I'm going to start by saying, you all know I have a little bit of ADD. So being at home, <laughs> squirrel moments are killing me. Anyway, because I have too many distractions. Um, so uh, my, my big thing has always been, if we can get the brokers engaged uh, and um, do a training class for new brokers, that will go a long way in helping with not only professionalism, it's being proactive, not reactive to our to issues. And the brokers are the ones who uh, are in charge on, uh, for of their uh, realtors. And somebody must not be muted because I'm hearing a lot of noise in the background. Anyway, um, the, uh, the brokers are the ones who are responsible for um, their agents. And so if they know the rules and know what's what when they become a broker, so many of them get their broker's license and then um, start hiring agents and uh, just turn them loose and don't do anything. So we, I feel like we either need to do an orientation class to new brokers or training classes. You know, now you're a broker, uh, you're a broker now, now what a, what's next and that that would go a long way in helping our association uh, always being proactive is better than being reactive and having to do with professionalism and all that would be enhanced so much by uh, tagging the brokers first so to me that is our biggest issue and has been also you, I think you get more involvement if you got the brokers uh, involved to see what why it's important for their them and their agents to be involved in our association because it's where the rules are made that we all work under. So it's important. Okay, fantastic. We're gonna move on to question two. Thank you, Pat. Um, Mr. Omar Capellan, uh, will you support positions taken by the Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you're opposed to the positions that were being considered and debated by the Board of Directors? Again, thank you, Madam President, for the question. Um, something that I haven't mentioned uh, yet, but I feel is also important for our members to know, uh, is that I am a key contact for Senator Tom Wright and also uh, Realtor Political Action Committee or RPAC, Golden R level and President Circle. I think that's important to mention. Um, in the last three years that I have been a director for Space Coast Association of Realtors and four for Florida Realtors representing our association, I have learned how important it is to support the board and the decisions. Um, I remember uh, Pat Weeks here present telling me uh, how this kind of works out. So we can have difference of opinions. We can have all these things happen in the boardroom, but at the end, we walk away as friends. And that's something I always took to heart because that's super important. Uh, so supporting my colleagues and fellow directors and the leadership team is crucial. 
And I am humbled by the fact that we directors um, will have different of opinions uh, or difference of opinions um, as it is expected. But when the work is done, we walk away from the boardroom as friends, colleagues. And it is also key to note that um, during these meetings, we can express ourselves and expose our viewpoints without fear of retaliation and or ridicule. And I think that's very important to all of us. For the past three years, the atmosphere in the boardroom has been healthy and definitely not toxic. I'm very proud to continue to be part of it. And with your vote, I will continue to support the board any way I can. Thank you. Great, thank you. Tammy, will you support the positions taken by the Space Coast Association of Realtors, Board of Directors, even if you may be opposed to this positions when they're being considered and, and debated by the Board of Directors? Yes, um, it's very important that we all have different opinions in the board. We all bring different perspectives. We all bring um, different experience. And it's great to have the debates and to have disagreements and discussion in the boardroom, but we are one um, once the final decision has been made. And it's important for the association that we stay as one. And it's important for the members that we um, even if we disagree on some things, and that does happen, um, it's happened to me, but when we walk out of the boardroom, we are one and we support each other no matter what, and we've usually learned something along the way, even if we disagree with it. So, yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. Natalie Derrick, will you support the positions taken by Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you oppose the positions when they're being considered and debated? by the board of directors. Yes, I will. Um, having served on multiple governing boards with various personalities and the drama that sometimes can ensue as a result, um, many of you are aware that no matter what my personal opinions and thoughts are, once I walk out of that room, you are still my best friend. That is one of the things that um, that we need as a board. Um, we need to understand that each other, we, we come from different places and different viewpoints in our lives. Not everybody's experiences are the same. And so we have to have empathy for each other. And that means that we reach a consensus in the boardroom and we walk out and the rest of the world has no idea what was discussed in that room. We are a united front. I call it kissing, hugging, and holding hands, but that might be a little personal for a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Mr. Rusty Mel, will you support the positions taken by Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you oppose the positions when they're being considered and debated? Yes, um, I will. That's, that's a, kind of an easy one. I concur and agree with all the statements that everybody else is saying. I think it's important that we get in there and we challenge each other. We ask the, the tough questions uh, and take that feedback, as I believe Omar and Tammy and people said before me. Uh, then when we leave, this is not about us, or our personal business. It's about the membership as a whole and what's mm -hmm. best is the membership. And uh, to that point, you learn a lot. Somebody, you know, questions and, and challenges what you're thinking and you get a different perspective and look and why it's better. So uh, at the end of the day, yes, we're going to support what's best for the decision for the association, the group. And uh, I think we grow and have these great conversations that helps us and the association. So we'll support it as a united front. Excellent. All right, All right thank you. Ms. Rose Street, same question. Will you support the positions taken by Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you oppose the positions when they're being considered and debated? Absolutely, yes. We must have integrity as professionals, and once a decision is made, we need to embrace it as if it was our own. Excellent. All right, Rose, thank you. Uh, Ms. Donna Tidwell, same question. I'm going to repeat it, though. We support <laughs> positions taken by the Space Coast Association of Realtors, Board of Directors, even if you oppose the positions when they're being considered and debated. Absolutely, without a doubt, I would. I truly believe that the board of directors is a synonym for the word team. And the word team, as we all have heard many times before, there is no I in team. So yes, supporting the team um, is 
is a definite, um, just like everyone has said, we walk out the door, we all walk out united. Just as if all of us, if there were, uh, we were at a crossroad intersection and there were four of us at each of the roads, we all witnessed an accident. We would all see it in a different perspective. We all saw the same accident, but it's in a different perspective, depending upon whatever angle it is. Mm -hmm. I think that's how the, bo the board works and operates as well. So yes, absolutely would support it. Okay, great, thank you. Ms. Pat Week, same question. Would you support the positions taken by Space Coast Association of Realtors Board of Directors, even if you were opposed to the a position um, when they were being considered and debated? Absolutely, always have done that. Um, and uh, in the six years I was, I've been on the board uh, that I've always done that. So, and uh, Donna and everybody has made great points. Uh, you go into the board room and you think uh, from reading the agenda that you're gonna vote one way and then you hear somebody else's perspective and suddenly, ah, different point of view. Maybe, maybe what I was thinking wasn't correct. So, and then when we leave, you're right. We are all friends. We all, we always, you know, I, I hope I have no enemies with anybody. Um, and uh, so I will always support the board. Once we leave the room, we are united as one and uh, definitely. Okay, great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> we are on our third question. And we're going to start from the top again. Uh, so Omar Capellan, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize during the next two years? Um, thank you, Madam President. This is, this is uh, um, a little bit of a longer answer for me. Um, to me, uh, as I mentioned originally on, on the first question, customer experience and, and value, but also I add things such as relevancy, member engagement, and attracting leaders. So um, I already expressed uh, uh, about customer experience and value, but I will say this, we will continue to net identify our member needs so that we can stay ahead of the curve at all times, which leads me to the next point, relevancy. And uh, as we all face downward uh, pressure or disruption when it comes to the future real estate associations, um, it seems that our future has been dictated to us by strong external forces. Uh, consumerism, connectivity, mobility, new generation models, portals, single sign-on, for example, that we just transitioned into yesterday. Um, but these external forces have access to mega capital and each one is causing transformational and fundamental shifts in, our, in every industry, ours, of course, being one of them. So if we consider these forces to be warning signs and add the dissatisfaction, the real estate status quo, from the very top to the very bottom, um, then we have a recipe for some interesting times, I feel. So consolidation of associations and MLSs may not be the answer to the larger problem of relevance for local associations, no matter the size, I feel. Uh, I think we're doing a great job at uh, going head on uh, with these uh, external forces, which will certainly delay things, uh, but I think it is virtually incumbent upon us, uh, directors and associations to create additional options and solutions to remain relevant in our industry. And that brings me then to member engagement, um, trying to communicate the, uh, the value of membership and how to engage our members. And as Pat mentioned, the brokers to be a part of the association is a continual challenge. Uh, our members' time is valuable and we understand that. Uh, and trying to increase our engagement with the association while balancing life and, 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 and work is, is, is a challenge. We're always trying to find new ways to do this and to communicate with our members. Currently, we're working to get better in, in our uh, social media outlets, websites, and as of yesterday, as you all know, our, uh, uh, integrate our single sign-on uh, uh, solution, which members uh, 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 engagement then leads to my last point, which is attracting leaders. Um, an agent leadership and a lack of young members showing this hard to get involved in leading the association are great concerns. Um, like for so many other associations. One indication of this continuing trend is the lack of uh, leadership turnover, for example, uh, leaving the association without ideas for new prospects. We had hoped, um, I'm, I'm sure when uh, YPN was launched, that would be an avenue to identify groom future leadership, but most young professionals kept to grab, uh, gravitating towards social events or 
uh, over philanthropy or advocacy uh, based activities. Although to be fair, I've noticed in the last year, a little shift on that. I'm really happy about that, but I don't know if that's an outlier or uh, a new trend, that would be really cool. Uh, and it's a challenge to keep the Young Professionals Network exclusive to the group for whom it was uh, intended. So consequently, it's a fully inclusive group of longstanding volunteers uh, but are they going to make the, the, the switch over to come to the uh, board and become part of leadership? That remains to be seen. So our plan is to continue to support members um, who show interest in the association uh, leadership through our own internal leadership academy program so we can guide them to the path to local leadership. So apply it. It's very well said. And, uh, and this is with, our, uh, with your vote. I will continue to help and assist the association managing these issues. I want to thank everybody for your attention this morning and uh, well, for me, Omar Capellan. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Next up, Tammy Christofoli. In your opinion, what should our association emphasize over the next two years? So I think everyone can feel it happening, but I think within the next two years, I think our market is shifting. And I think our members are starting to get very concerned. Um, listings are sitting on the market. They're not getting as many sales. The last two years have been, I won't say easy, but a lot, um, not as, they probably didn't have as much concern as they do now. So I think for the next few years, we need to make sure we're supporting our members um, and everything they need, education, um, guidance, um, you know, just us supporting them and understanding that the market is shifting. We're here for you. These are the tools um, you need to stay relevant. Um, I think that's probably going to be our biggest concern. I don't know if it's membership um, decline because of it, but it would be great if we can get in front of it before it shifts completely and we can help them learn how to navigate through it, how to um, deal with a changing market or a down market or stabilizing as they call it. Um, but I think our members are going to be um, something that we really need to focus on within the next two years to make sure that they feel like we are supporting them and they have the necessary tools to thrive even in a shifting market. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, Natalie Derrick, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize over the next two years? Member engagement and inclusivity. I look among our panel of, of candidates for the board of directors and every single one of them is so qualified for this role that no matter who is elected to fill these positions, we have a bright future ahead of us. However, with 5,000 plus members, we should have a candidate pool of 20 people or more. And it should be much more diverse than it is. And we need to reassess and reevaluate -evalu what it is that is preventing people from walking through our association doors and being engaged. What, what does it take to make them feel welcome and included? With that is also an increase in community outreach. Without community outreach, people do not automatically think of a realtor to contact when it comes time for their real estate transactions. We want to be in the forefront. We are the stewards of our communities. We know more than anybody else what's coming. We know all about the insurance changes, the legal challenges facing our foreign investors, and we have that experience to provide it to them. And we need to be that resource that they automatically turn to. Thank you. And I would appreciate your vote. Excellent. Mr. Rusty Mel, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize in the next two years? I think those are all uh, valid points that everybody's got. And I kind of speak some of the same language through there. I really believe the communication and involvement uh, when I first got involved in this, I heard the word uh, realtor family a lot. And you kind of think, oh, what does that really mean? And where does that go? But it, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and you don't realize until you get involved 
that I have so many people that I can pick up the phone and call about different contracts, things, even outside my brokerages, or I have people calling me. And being involved in the association, being involved in the committees has helped me uh, get engaged with that and have those resources and mentors and people to call because we don't know it all. Uh, so I'd like to see that communication and involvement grow. And I think one way to do that is going to be through our business partners. Our business partners are in everybody's office. They're talking to everybody all the time. Uh, I think we can make that even a better relationship between our business partners and everybody else to get those. They're in the broker's office all the time. So I think relating that. The other big thing that I'm really excited about, hopefully this year, is and hopefully everybody on this call has it, is the Space Coast app. We talk about communication, and I think the app is going to be a platform that everybody's used to. Uh, it was used at the conference that we were just at. I got text messages from Carrie, thank you, Carrie, of where events were going to be, what meetings should be attend. It was quick. It was easy. It wasn't checking my email. It's right there. People are going to be able to pay from the app. This one platform with the app, I think that um, we need to get that out. That's going to be a great way to get people engaged because it's platforms that you're used to. It's quick and easy on there. So there's a lot of things that we're working. We're finally getting there. We've talked about communication and engagement for a long time. I think these tools are really going to help. And if people realize that if they're having a difficult situation, that, you know, this realtor family, as we call it, is there to help. Uh, anybody can, you know, I have people call me all the time, whether from my brokerage or not. Can you help me with a commercial contract? Can you help me with something else uh, through there? So uh, it's paying that forward and helping each other to be the best we can be. And I think if we do that and share that, uh, we'll grow that. So I think we've got some tools in the toolbox that we didn't have before this platform app and with our business partners taking it out there. I think if we strengthen that, we can work together uh, and get more people involved. To Omar's part, point, I'd like to see more younger people. Somebody else mentioned diverse crowd. We've got a lot of great experience out there and I'd like to see more involvement with everybody. So, that's Excellent. Thank, you. Thank you. Ms. Rose Street, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize during the next two years? Well, I think in my opinion that we need to emphasize the community. Um, I agree with what everybody has pretty much said before me, um, as far as getting out into the community and letting them know we're there. We've done waterway cleanup, we do BCIN events, I'm on the foundation. So I do go visit some of the locations that we do donate money, contribute money to. Um, but I think it's important, our mission from the board is to take care of the community and be a trusted resource. I don't know how many of you volunteer in schools or do, <clears throat> excuse me, anything like that, but that's also a great way for people to understand what we as realtors do. We are volunteers until we get paid three months later or whenever that happens. You know, we are really taking care of our clients and taking care of maybe their family and helping others. Um, another thing that I think is also important is that we do work with our business partners. We do a lot of things together as a group, whether it's the RPAC events or the BCIM events, or just they teach classes up at the board and feed us food. You know, it's just a good, a good connection to have. And they understand what we do, but their families also sometimes need a little care. And so it's just important that we take care of each other. And I think our emphasis should be on just continuing to find ways to help our community. We've done dog parks. We, like I said, we did Project Prom this year. We've also done, you know, other events. I feel that's where our emphasis should also be. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Rose. Ms. Donna Tidwell, in your opinion, what should our, what should our association emphasize over the next two years? Hi, um, thank you, Nancy. Um, there's a couple of things that I think that we need to address and probably um, first I'd like to mention is the technology integration. I cannot stress how important that is uh, to all of us as an association and as individual business owners. You know, we've got to get more training workshops, not necessarily formal classes, but maybe formal workshops. Um, maybe coordinate with the tech companies to get them involved with us. Showcase some of the success so stories that people have. Some of the, maybe an older realtor who just learned TikTok or, or something. Um, maybe even offer technology related certificates, um, which might help. I think probably the best pool of resource 
that we would have for this is to engage the younger generation in this. And I think that would be a twofold purpose is getting them involved into the technology, but also bringing them in and getting them involved with the board. Also, another thing I really believe that we need to um, focus on is environmental practices. And I'm talking about green energy uh, building designs, energy efficiency homes with the PACE program and responsible land use, you know, cleanup. And um, uh, maybe even in the association, we can even um, implement recycling, you know, with the cans and bottles. Uh, with the trash receptacles that we have. Um, we need to advocate all those policies to create a more environmentally conscious real estate industry to include us. And what Natalie had uh, touched base on is uh, inclusion, but I believe it diversity inclusion I, and inclusion. I really believe that that's a strong focal point. We need to uh, look for the um, uh, people with a diverse backgrounds and bring them in, invite them in and show them what we're all about, provide them resources, maybe even implement a mentoring program for those uh, diverse uh, background individuals. Um, also, and I, I don't think this would should go ever away. It's not only for the next two years, but I think continuing education and professional development is always uh, front and foremost, but it's, it's really important, not only that we get the formal training, but the practical training, you know, how do you write a contract? There's so many people who don't even know how to write a correct contract. Thank you. So again, my name's Donna Tidwell and please vote for me. So I'd love to be on the board of directors again. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Pat Weeks, in your opinion, what should our association emphasize during the next two years? Well, everybody has brought up such wonderful different things. Um, and uh, for the next two years, um, because of uh, the NAR lawsuits and all those things that are going on, uh, we really need to uh, get out into the public, and a number of people have touched on this, what our value is. Because if we don't stand up for what we are worth and what we bring to uh, the transaction, uh, the government could make us go away, which we continue to fight. And uh, another reason to give to RPAC. Um, but we have to get out, and uh, Rusty uh, pointed out the boat, buyer broker agreements, things like that. But we have to get our value out to the public uh, and continue that. And all these other things will fall into place because uh, people will realize we are professionals, just like a doctor or attorney, any of those, we are professionals. I don't ever see us going away simply because we are a people business. P many people are worried that AI and things like that will do away with us. Uh, nothing over the years has actually, uh, the number of people using realtors has increased over the years with the uh, with online and everything else because people realize they don't know as much as what they thought they did of what they need. So, but we, uh, the government for some reason does not think we are, are worth what we uh, do and are trying to make us be employees versus independent brokers. And so we've got to fight that, continue to fight that and bring our value to the to the world. Uh, there are so many things at the association that um, uh, what we can continue to do, but ultimately my number one thing is uh, to get our value out to the public. Oh, and I don't know, do we get to speak again or is this it? This is pretty much it. You got something okay. else? Okay, well then vote for me, Pat Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't, I, since I missed the beginning with my computer issue, I didn't hear if we got a follow up to our initial thing. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And we do have a great slate of people running today. Uh, so, but I do ask that you save one vote at the bottom for me. All right, Pat, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we have uh, heard from our panel. Uh, Carrie and Lindsay, do we have any questions from members in attendance? 
I'm not seeing any, but if anybody has any, they can put them in the chat box. Okay. Well, until we see something, um, thank you for joining us virtually this morning. The election ballots will be mailed to you today at 12 noon, and they will come from invitations um, at uh, mail.electionbuddy.com. So for the purpose of this election, you will be voting for five directors, three of which will, must be broker owners, and the remaining two can be any licensure status. We need a quorum of 10% of our members to vote. So please, when you get the email, take a minute and vote so that email does not get lost in your inbox. I wanna say thank you so much uh, for all of the candidates who spent time and continue to spend time giving to the association um, and one last thing, thank you to all of the staff uh, and um, uh, particularly Carrie and Lindsay. And uh, yesterday was tough. We had our, our single sign on that turned over yesterday and everything went very smoothly. Thanks again to the staff and leadership. And um, at this point, unless there's any other questions. I just have one question. Yes, ma'am. How, how long is the um, election open for? So when does it close? So voting will, sorry, Madam President. Voting Go ahead, open, Carrie. Go ahead, Lizzie. Voting will open today at noon and it will close at 9 a.m. on September 6th. That's Wednesday, September 6th at 9 So we, we will continue to send out some information to remind you to vote and get out there and have your voice be heard. If you don't like something, get in there and change it. That's your power. That's your voice. And we encourage everybody out there to do that and to participate because we're better together, we're, we're stronger together. So thank you very much for your attention today and uh, it's time to adjourn this meeting. Thank you.